Hello Commanders, Commander Plater here and today I'm going to share with you some tips on how to outfit for a particular career in Elite Dangerous. This is very much more aimed at beginners, but the more experienced viewers will be able to share some top tips down in the comment section. Today we're taking a look at bounty hunting. Let's start with the ships you might be using for bounty hunting. Of course, you can use any ship that you'd like for any career path in Elite Dangerous, but you might be disappointed with the results. The ships that I suggest for each activity also don't take into consideration those extreme engineering outliers, and this is firmly aimed at beginners. Also note, I'm never going to suggest a Sidewinder, because really, you want to get out of that as quickly as possible. Eagle Viper Mark III and IV Cobra Marks 3 and 4 Diamondback Scout Diamondback Explorer Imperial Courier Vulture Federal Dropship Chieftain Federal Assault Ship Clipper Federal Gunship Verde Lance Python Type 10 Anaconda Corvette Cutter On to outfitting. Now, we're going to take a look at the different modules as we go. We're going to start off with core internals. I consider these to be the most important things for you to actually put some credits into. So first thing you're going to want to improve is your power plant. I recommend you A-rate this as you need. I'm going to go straight for A-rating. The reason being is because I'm going to be using a lot of power on this build that I'm going to be working on here. So, normal power plant for a exchange. Next, thrusters. Thrusters are very important so you can move quicker. It sounds pretty... Uh, pretty self-explanatory but at the same time it's going to improve your maneuverability and that's very important because otherwise you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. Next thing you want to improve is going to be your power distributor. This is going to improve the rate of which you can boost, the rate of which you can fire your weapons and your shields will recharge. This is very important especially for bounty hunting. The rest of it, I'm going to say that you can actually get away with derating. It sounds a bit daft that we've spent so much money on these few modules but then again, your frameshift drive isn't going to be that important for just bounty hunting, especially with most starting systems being nice and close, but if you want to put some credits into this, you can. Your life support just needs to be derated. This reduces the actual weight of it, and also increases your emergency life support timing without going over the top. Same goes for your sensors. Sensors will increase the range of which you can detect targets. The balance between the effectiveness and also the cost starts to really kind of dwindle so I'm going to say go for 3D and bearing in mind that none of this is including engineering whatsoever so with engineering you may find some real crazy results out there which means you don't need to put as much money into things as you thought you did. Next thing we're going to have a look at is your optional internals. I get asked about this a lot and to be honest the initial configuration for most ships is crap so I'm going to suggest that you sell this cargo rack here especially this is with the Cobra sorry with the Viper Mark IV in particular and you put the largest shield you can on possible it's going to help you it's going to keep you alive and that's kind of important when it comes to bounty hunting so we're going to go in and we're going to pick what is going to be basically the most expensive shield generator we can possibly get and one of the big questions around shield generators is do you go by weave or do you go normal? Personally, I tend to prefer to have the higher number of megajoules over the regen rate. That's personal preference, very much personal preference, until engineering comes into it and once you can go thermal by weave. But that's a completely different topic for another time. So we're going to go for maximum shield generator. And so that's 4A, that's going to give us a shield strength of 226, which is huge. But if you do compare that to the biweave, it gives you 181, but your regeneration rate is so much faster, and that is quite important. But it is personal preference, and I do recommend you try both. Like I said, don't let me tell you what to do, try both, make a decision. The next thing you might want is going to be some SCBs, and that's shield cell banks. The reason why you want them is they're going to give you a quick boost to your shields when you need them the most. And so we're going to pop some of them on. Uh, we are going to go for A. These get very, very toasty. And where you put these on, it's going to affect your heat generation. So that may affect your utility mounts, 
but we're going to come back and we're going to talk about them in a minute as well. For the rest of it, we're just doing combat. You're going to want to put as much as you can on the ship in the way of armor, that's right, and module reinforcements. We're pretty limited to what we can put on the Viper, but we've got an empty military compartment here. Makes sense. We're going to put a module reinforcement and we're going to put 3D on there. Next up we have an empty compartment. I'm going to actually put on there a module reinforcement. This will mean that when our shields do go down, because they will, we're going to have a little bit more time for us to make a hasty retreat and hopefully not die. And for the rest of the modules, we're just going to put hull. All hull, because you know what? You can never have too much hull. And there we go. This is pretty much maxed out here. This this one e cargo rack we're going to actually get rid of because once again, if we're just talking about combat, we don't need that. We do not need cargo for combat. And there we go. This is us all nice and kind of built up and maxed up. One thing you might want to look at is the base discovery scanner, possibly changing that over for an advanced one will help you just so you can locate targets a bit easier so we are going to go for that as well and as you can see we're racking up the uh, the price pretty quickly but it's going to be worth it especially considering this could potentially be your first purely dedicated bounty hunting ship on to utility mounts this is where you get a real bit of variety involved as you can see with the viper we do not have much in the way of choice but we are going to go over the different options that are available, and there are a couple of different options, especially for bounty hunting, you should think about. The first thing you should really consider, and especially with the recent changes to crime and punishment, this has its benefits and its drawbacks, is the kill warrant scanner. This will allow you to get additional bounties from targets. You scan them in a resource extraction site or a compromised nav beacon, or anywhere you find a wanted ship, and you'll get more information about the bounties that are available on them, and when you destroy them, you get additional bounties that you can claim, which is really handy. One other thing to think about this is the power generation, or the power draw. As you can see here at the bottom, just here, the power requirement is way over what we're able to provide at the moment with the power supply we've got, so we do need to think about whether we go for B, C, D, or E. E, you've got to be a little bit closer for, so B, further away. Personally, I'm going to give this a miss because we only have the two utility mounts, and if we've got SCBs, we need to think about our other options. As I mentioned, SCBs get toasty. This means you need to think about heat sink launchers. These will essentially give you a massive dump of heat and get rid of any heat generation you've got and chill your ship right down. That's very handy with SCBs. And again, it does take up one of your only two utility mounts on this particular ship. So for me, I'm like, meh, SCBs. I, I, I always forget to use them, so I'm not going to pick a heat sink launcher against my own advice because that's what I do. Do as I say, not what I do. Now, shield boosters. Good old reliable shield boosters. These do exactly what you think they're going to do. They are going to boost your shields. They do come at a cost of power, and at the same time, they are a little bit heavier than not having them, but they do give you a 20% boost of your shield as standard. And once you get into engineering, these things are absolute beasts, and they really do give you a huge quantity of improvement. But that's, say, engineering for a different time. Let's talk point defense. Point defense has a very unique purpose, and it does only serve one purpose whatsoever, and that is to take down any missiles that are flying towards you. Especially with NPCs the way they are, once your shields are stripped, they will spam you with missiles and they will destroy your modules and tear through you in no time at all. It's a very handy module, so for this particular build, I'm going to pick a point defense. I think that's gonna be pretty handy. Of course, if you don't get attacked with anyone with missiles, it's gonna be pretty useless, but at the same time, if you are, it is invaluable. I'm also going to pick a, a, a shield booster as well. That's going to come in pretty handy for this particular build. And finally, onto chaff. One that's really worth a mention is that when you use it, it's going to cause anyone with turreted or gimbaled weapons to basically miss what you're doing. This helps reduce damage, and over time, it's going to give you a little bit more time to either get your shields back up or run away if you have to. And you know what? That is a perfectly valid tactic. Onto weapons, the good stuff at last. Believe it or not, I'm not going to tell you exactly what you should use for this, but I am going to recommend a couple of different things. Personally, for me, I like to go for a mixture of kinetic and thermal weapons. Thermal weapons are simply weapons that are energy-based, so you can see them here, they're listed as thermal, so you can see plasma accelerators, or pulse lasers, or beam lasers, or burst lasers. I'm going to be going for a combination of thermal and kinetic. For kinetic, you can see we've got 
cannons, fragment cannons, rail guns, and also multi cannons. My preference is definitely going to be multi cannons and lasers for your first build for bounty hunting. That way you can pretty much sit back, relax, and it's very, very good for tracking targets. No messing around, get to it. But of course, it is personal preference, and I really, really recommend that you try out different options. Also, do not completely write missiles off. They're very, very good for taking out modules, as I mentioned before. It's a threat to you, therefore it's a threat to NPCs for your bounty hunting. So I'm going to put on this particular ship. We're going to do multi-cannons, and I'm going to go for multi-cannons. Uh, we're going to go for gimbaled. Gimbaled are a smart move for your first outing, as I said. This way, it kind of minimizes your missing. Time on target's better. But I will mention that fixed weapons do give you an increased a boost to damage and that's very handy because if you're good at time on target then you know what you're ahead of the crowd and that's good I'm gonna pick some pulse lasers for me just because energy preferences that's just me well there you go commanders a basic guide for outfitting for bounty hunting what are you waiting for get yourself into a resource extraction site or a compromised nav beacon and get some credits and kills under your belt and thank you for watching please make sure you like and subscribe and whilst you're there make sure you turn on notifications so you get an alert every time I put a new video out. Also if you're looking to support the channel please check out the links in the description as there's a couple of different ways of doing so. And once again thank you for watching. Commander Plater out.